you can those for yeah, uh, Mr. Malikiris, if you could approach the technical experts so you can be wired up for the, for the panel discussion. Uh, before I announce the, the panel uh, composition, just to let you know that if you're following the conference program on the, co on the application, below each image there is a rating and if you would appreciate if you would rate each speaker if you want. And also on the home screen, there is an event evaluation. We would appreciate your evaluation as well, either now or during the process of the conference or at the end. I should probably wait until we have enough armchairs on stage. Uh, moderator, will you be doing the moderating from the podium? Okay, then. May I invite uh, Mr. Andreas Kisostomo, the moderator of the... Uh, of the panel. Andres Kisostom is the Chief Strategy Officer of Tototeo Maritime and he is going to moderate a panel discussion on how we keep focus on people while we transit to the digital era. And also at this stage, may I kindly invite uh, the Shipping Deputy Minister, Mr. Vasilios Dimitriadis, uh, Captain Eberhard Koch, who is Osterreichische Lloyd and President of the Cyprus Marine Club. Captain Eugen Adami, owner and managing director of Mastermind Ship Management, and uh, Mr. Vasilis Malikidis, OSM and vice president of, the, of Young Ship Cyprus. While, since the moderator is ready, Andreas, you can take over and you can, of course, introduce the. Good morning, everybody. Let's have a lively debate before we go for coffee. I mean, looks like the, I am a permanent <laughs> conference attendee the last four weeks. I've been doing the same panel yesterday, but with different panelists, of course. Uh, and our subject today will be how we keep focus on people while we transit to the digital era. I mean, you, you had so many interesting presentations before me. Uh, the digital way and pathway of shipping is here, is irreversible, which is very important, and we need to see how we do it in such a way that we avoid mistakes of the past and, how, and which actually don't make mistakes in relation to the humans. How do we focus on people, whether they are on shore or on board. And those they should be the ones that should be in the center of our discussions today because we want to do the transition in such a way that the education is in place and everything else that we need to make these people to perform their functions correctly with the new technology is there at any moment, at any time. Did you, now I'm going to read something I don't usually read, but this one I want to read it because I found it on an article and I really like it. Digitalization in the maritime industry is gaining fast ground and the transition towards digitalization automation is speeding up, right? Digital technologies and solutions are being used to increase competitiveness and enhance operational efficiency. They are also implemented to spare the industry along the decarbonization path to realize zero emissions from information shipping by mid-century. Now, Data streams from sensors and other sources of information can be used for decision making and enhance monitoring, control, quality assurance and verification. You can use per se as if you like and if you want demonstration I can do it later. Indeed, maritime stakeholders need to rethink their current strategies and adapt to secure efficient, sustainable operations and strengthen short and long term competitiveness but do we have in focus the people and their role? As we move away from business as usual, how we ensure that people adopt to the new norms, how young people react, are we on the right path or are we missing something out? With these thoughts, I introduce once again the panelists, and I will, I will start with the Deputy Minister, Vasilios Dimitriadis, the CEO, CEO of Osteroid Lloyd, Eberhard Koch, uh, Eugene Adami from Mastermind, the Managing Director, and last but not least, 
Vasilis Malekidis from OSM. He is the group finance director and vice president of the young ship. And I forgot to mention that Captain Koch is also the president of the Marine Club. Vasilis, if I may call you now, Your Excellency. I will have to ask you a very pertinent question. As the industry raises towers digitalization, how the government sector, that you represent very rightly, is matching the race? Are the government services digital ready? Are there any initiatives from your side to assist the shipping industry to the digital transformation journey and, and how you ensure that people are correctly participating in this transformation in terms of skills and knowledge? Well, thank you very much, uh, Andreas. I don't know if the micro. Thank you very much. Well, uh, exactly a year ago, in this room, we launched a strategic vision for Cyprus shipping to make uh, Cyprus shipping more resilient, more competitive, and uh, of course, uh, to be in line with the, the new technologies and to meet effectively the challenges. Uh, this strategy consists of 35 actions. Uh, a third of these actions uh, are related to digital uh, transformation, uh, digital era, use of digital technologies in our practices and operations. I'm proud to say that 22 of these actions are already delivered, implemented, but when it comes to digital, uh, we, are ha we are now having one of the, our major tasks in the Shipping Deputy Ministry is to turn all our services into digital. We have recently signed a contract uh, on an EU-funded project under the Recovery and Resilience uh, uh, funding mechanism uh, to turn all our services into digital and with very tight deadlines uh, as uh, imposed by the European Union. So our aim is to turn uh, the shipping deputy ministry to a paperless environment by early 2024. But uh, all the services, any service that will go digital will be evident and uh, the shipping community will be able to experience that, um, I mean, throughout uh, this process. And I do believe that this will be very clear and the program is very evident by the end of this year or early next year. So this is one thing we are doing, uh, which will add a great value to what we are trying to do to create a framework of one-stop uh, shipping shop. Um, and of course, to be able to uh, further enhance the efficiency uh, of our services and to respond to the needs of the industry. You very rightly said that uh, the, the industry is moving fast. Uh, we, we do acknowledge that. And as regulators, we see our role as facilitators to this uh, process and it's not only what we are doing internally, but we have also established together with the Cyprus Foundation on Research and Innovation a program called RICE, which stands for Research, Innovation, Shipping Environment, uh, in order to incentivize and support any innovative projects towards decarbonization or digitalization. The first uh, uh, program, it was a proof of concept was launched back in July, uh, explicitly addressing the needs of the shipping industry, but there are many more to come, uh, showing uh, as a government our support to any innovative ideas to help them to, I mean, for take up commercialization on any innovative ideas that uh, we've seen also today uh, from a couple of, uh, from a number of speakers. Uh, for the rest, we do believe that uh, uh, as regulators, we have a lot of work to do at EU and global fora. First, to secure funding for innovative ideas uh, on maritime uh, and shipping, and of course, to, uh, to have the, a framework that they can, uh, we can ensure adequate funding, especially at EU level, but also to see how, as regulators, we can also uh, make sure that in this transitional period that I'm talking now about um, how we are running our ships, automated systems, autonomous uh, practices, how we make sure that uh, the existing conventions, uh, they are amended uh, uh, wisely in order to ensure that they cover, they have provisions in place 
for this uh, uh, transitional period where we will see a number of conventional but also uh, new modern ships and technologies uh, I mean operating together of course our strategy uh, takes also into account a number of other elements uh, that uh, are close to becoming digital I can only refer to an example how we are approaching the digital era that is also close to the upskilling and to the young generation but also to our seafarers uh, our uh, campaigns now in schools uh, they have a more interactive digital element so we we will try we are trying to promote maritime studies and professions by the use of uh, by creating a landing page and allowing the young people to uh, get more familiar with the shipping uh, sector by exploring and visiting the website Google to find the answer and to explore how important is the uh, uh, shipping world but also when it comes to safety our I think innovative way of approaching things is that if a ship is detained and an owner has to pay a penalty to us we said instead of paying a penalty we would like uh, to use this money uh, to train seafarers on board by using uh, digital uh, courses uh, exactly on the course of the detention mm. so we want to like this to create a framework that uh, shipping operators ship managers ship owners will be you will use the digital technology to train the seafarers on board to avoid uh, repeated detentions for the same course so this is how we uh, see our role as regulators and of course we will be happy to hear from the shipping community what are the real needs uh, in order for any new programs in cooperation with the foundation uh, the Cyprus Foundation on Research and Innovation will be fit for purpose to so you can make it good use to accelerate the uptake of any innovative ideas thank you thank you Minister Pitt. This is not hard talk, don't get me wrong, but you mentioned the, the expression regulator and regulator, and I do appreciate you're the regulator and most probably you are only big players on the international regulation as well. What I worry about, and I would like to see if you have any ideas on that or the ministry does, the basic infrastructure for education of seafarers goes back to 1970. And the best revision that happened to it was in 1995, I was still a kid. Question is, how can the STCW, which is the framework for the seafarers education, or how the Cyprus government, since we have you here, is thinking of taking this step further? What are the initiatives you might bring the, in, in, in the forefront, which in my opinion should happen yesterday, try more at least, or the parties of STCW as soon as possible, because definitely that convention doesn't cover anything digital. Well, uh, Andreas, I do agree with you that there is a clear need to uh, update, to modernize the STCW Convention, to be in line with the recent uh, developments. Uh, on our side, uh, at the national level, of course, part of the digitalization is to provide uh, e-certificates e and have to speed up the process on how we, we are approaching the endorsement and the issuance of certificates. But when it comes to STCW, this is an ongoing discussion also within the EU, how we can uh, update and modernize uh, the convention in order to uh, be aligned with the new uh, technologies uh, when it comes especially to training and certification. And of course, any uh, ideas from the industry on that to reflect on our approaches and practices is more than welcome. Thank you, Vasilis. Captain Koch. Although most of the digital transformation is ensuring at the moment fuel optimization automation, the near future will bring us with new norms where the machine and human interaction will require people to be assertive in the coexistence of AI, and I mean artificial intelligence. In your opinion, what are those elements needed to be taught for this new generation of seafarers? The minister just touched on the revision, let's say, of STCW, and how we actually keep the human in the loop. Thank you, Andreas, and Kalimera to everybody. First of all, I must state that we need to go forward. 
My company's logo for 187 years is always steaming ahead. So we will steam ahead to meet this challenge. It will not be an easy one. It will not be achieved in short term. But eventually, with the support and contributions of all stakeholders, this goal will be scored. It is a teamwork that we need to seek and work with. Flag states have a significant role to play. In fact, their digitalization will be the milestone that the rest of us will continue building the next brick until we reach the peak top. I will come back to this. Let me just deviate from the course for a few moments. Our short-term problems, ladies and gentlemen, are completely different. Millions of dollars in damages shipping faces every year from off-spec bunkers. And consequently, additionally heavy work on board the ships need for ship's crew to solve the problem. Digitalization, will it help? AI, will it help? Totally wrong and unsafe loading, container loading plans received from shore, which have to be rectified, sometimes completely to be changed. Does digitalization help? Human errors increasing from pilots, does digitalization help? Lack of ordinary old good seamanship in general. We are focusing on ISM, on ISPS, on ISO, etc., etc. But the crews are forgetting the fundamentals. Reminders need to be done every week. Digitalization helps. Biofueling. In a week's time, one of my vessels will receive biofuel a blend of biofuel. How will my main engines react? What will happen? Digitalization helps. Consequently, with our today's crews, the biggest assets we have, with today's already received education, we cannot achieve the goal, except maybe fuel optimization with digitalization. All of us, and especially myself, need to be educated how to deal with digitalization on board and ashore. Our seafarers, once again, one of the most important factors for a successful shipping industry in general, need to have our full attention and support in this respect. We should start thinking their next step of education, not only for the existing seafarers, but also for the youngsters while they are studying in their home Mediterranean academies. It is imperative with the assistance of IMO, universities, manufacturers and other related enterprises to draft learning models to achieve a satisfactory compliance with the needs of today's digitalization, but also for the future one to come. Another important step we need to do to steam ahead is to have ships that are fully equipped with the necessary units for digitalization. New buildings must be so designed to cope with the requirements of digitalization. Machineries and other important units on board must be so designed that digitalization is a fundamental must. When we achieve the goal of digitalization on board, we will be in a pleasant position to achieve another goal that is already set, less CO2 emissions with fuel optimization. Also, we will be in the position to monitor our vessels, routes, in such a way as to minimize expenses, flood less goods will be offered to the consumers better reasonable prices. Digitalization must be an interaction between shipbuilding industry, seafarers, manufacturers, protection of the environment, maritime academies, and flag state. Let's work together. We will make it again. But don't stress our seafarers much more. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. And I would like to keep two things you mentioned. 
please do so. One is don't stress our seafarers, the last bit you said. Educate them to cope, to cope with the problem. But also we'll come back to the other thing you said that does digitalization help? That's something we'll debate later on when we finish with the first round of questions. But also, naval architects like me, do you have designs digital ready? I mean, we're talking about ammonia ready or hydrogen ready designs now, but we don't, I, I usually don't hear <laughs> digital ready ships, but I know about smart, smart ships, which actually are confused because they're just automated, which is totally different than digitalization. Captain Adami, you've been in this kind of optimization platforms and uh, digital uh, platforms in many years now. So I'm asking you the, the following question. How is the plethora of these digital solutions playing out as a ship manager where the company could have vessels of different systems? Secondly, do you have any hands-on experience on these solutions? How do they cope with each other and how are they relate? But lastly, from the experience, how, how can the digital solutions cope with the different ships and different reporting systems that are in place and therefore with differing sets of data. And this is the last bit I want from you. Finally, how come people in the companies can cope with it? Yeah, uh, thank you, Andreas. Um, let me answer you in the beginning with an academic uh, approach and then with an applicable approach in our industry. Digitalization is not something which is for the humans because in digitalization process, we translate bits and bytes into a process. So the human is out of there. Uh, what Eberhard is concerned is not a digitalization. Eberhard is concerned about the transformation, our digital transformation, not digitalization. So this is a huge difference. The digital transformation is a change of our culture in the company where we translate manual processes into a digitized and automated format. It's completely something different. So when we talk about the digital transformation, we need in the boardrooms to develop a very high hierarchy about what we want to achieve with our people in the office, with our people on board, and with our collaborators with whom we do business, i.e. the administration, the charterers, and the ports. And if we go fast, as, as you said in your opening statement, with our digitalization process, my answer is no. About 30 years ago, here in Limassol, we as a shipping industry were requesting the administration to get computerized. The buzzword at that time was computerization. So uh, how do we organize all this? Because we are in a jungle of applications which we saw in the beautiful presentation from Kongsberg, congratulations uh, to that, and uh, uh, solutions which are brought by the industry to the shipping companies just to take a decision. 550 different apps to organize what? My ETA of arrival, my bunker on board today, my course, my weather, my speed, we did that 150 years ago. It's the same data. It's the same information which needs to be processed in the operations department. So there is not much really fast moving things. But where are fast moving things are on the technology side with manufacturers and with shipyards. Here we are going very, very fast. A digital twin of a vessel, however, is not possible to do very easily. Because you need to digitize all your equipment on board. Your main engine, your auxiliary engine, your scrubbers, your radars, your pumps, different manufacturers. 
but all the individual and single components inside this equipment need to be digitized. Only once you achieve this, you have a true digital twin. Yeah? What you can easily do is uh, uh, to, to put up benchmarks and uh, draw lines and trends, and, and, but that's not really a digital twin. Yeah? Now, that was my academic answer. Uh, application to the shipping industry and to the ship management industry. Yes, there are great tools available. Uh, I would like again refer to the Kongsberg presentation. You showed WinGD, you showed MIN, uh, the two biggest manufacturer of two-stroke engines. Uh, both manufacturers have today available in their portfolio on request of the ship owners and the ship managers entirely digital information of their machinery. Kongsberg as well. There is a standard which those companies have developed, which is called the ShipDeck standard. It is Ship Data Exchange, a standard built on the military standard and aviation standard S1000D, which allows you, as a ship manager and as a ship owner, totally free of charge, within three minutes, upload the entire digital machinery, totally free of charge. You just have to send an email to the manufacturers to give you the electronic manual and uh, the spare part catalog in ship decks format. It's available. Then you have data. With that data, you can populate your plant maintenance systems without human intervention. So you don't need any longer anyone in your shipping company to scrutinize this data and to, to, to punch. Yeah? And the application now to my company on the ship management side, we bought recently, very recently, we bought uh, uh, 12 and a half thousand ton sophisticated heavy load carrier, which will carry special equipment. And I needed for that vessel almost on the fly, a plant maintenance system. This is a process which all of you know who have done it, which takes sometimes three months, sometimes six months, because you don't really have the manuals available in books and you do the digitizing of the spare parts. No, we call the suppliers, we ask them to provide for the equipment, the ship tax data, for the machinery, and within one day, we had a complete populated plant maintenance system. So the things are there, we just have to make use of it. If we have reliable data, then the crew on board can very easily do the maintenance. They can go into the system, download from the application, the manual, uh, the, the manufacturer's instructions of how to open a fuel pump. They can see the images and they can go with that information into the engine room and do the job. So that's a brilliant application. We just have to embrace it and to complete it. And if we do it in this way, we take the people with us because the people have reliable data with where they can really do the job. And they can report back findings because it is data exchange and it's exactly the same thing what Boeing is doing when they are maintaining engines on the planes. It's exactly the same language but marinized and easily to understand. Thank you, Captain Adami. Vasilis, last but not least, you have to represent the young generation here because the question to you is today's society is becoming more and more sensitive on environmental and well-being issues. That's very important. The two are not, that they're not exclusive mutually, but they can be inclusive. But at the same time, the concept, I want everything right now, prevails and continues to prevail for the last 10 years. How well is the new generation, in your understanding of seafarers, 
is ready to embrace digitalization in the workspace, especially as I mentioned before, where the traditional model of people and machine prevails, and at the same time, these people, they live in the postmodern society where they want, where the monotonous tasks are eliminated, and the seafarer can take control of their work hours. I mean, many of us now are choosing to work Monday to Thursday, and that's a very prevailing concept in Brussels at the moment, and in Belgium in general. So, Vasilis, please. Thanks, Andrea. Um, I have to say that I really uh, enjoyed the discussion and the focus we have on, on people because in sessions like this we typically focus quite a lot on systems and technology and sometimes we tend to forget about the human element which from my perspective is the most important one when we look at the business system because it's the people behind the system, it's the people who design the system and ultimately it's the people who will put in good use the system. So, Going back to your well-articulated question, is the uh, young generation of CFRS ready to embrace digitalization? Um, I'm afraid my quick answer is no. We do operate in a quite conservative industry. We do see uh, owners quite late in the decision-making when it comes to their uh, decarbonization journey or other digital uh, solutions. And as you have rightly uh, commented in your questions and your discussions with the minister earlier, uh, we still operate under quite traditional training systems. So how do we anticipate from our seafarers to be ready and embrace digitalization? Uh, however, uh, I'd like to highlight a very, very positive uh, angle here. I believe that young generation uh, of seafarers, and just to be fair, also the ones that are a little bit older, I would say even greater, the whole hu humanity, it's very well positioned at best time ever in history to embrace digitalization, to embrace new technologies. Everyone is so positively inclined to the use of new technologies and get rid of all uh, the way you described the monotonous tasks, kill these repetitive tasks, and be able to get uh, more control uh, in their jobs. So I do see a tremendous opportunity here that we can turn this no, I mentioned earlier, to a super nice yes by appreciating the needs of the people. We put people in the center and act accordingly. So we do have as an industry to appreciate this. We need to equip people and seafarers with the tools to master their work. We need to uh, create frameworks with accountabilities where uh, by setting the boundaries, as long as the people provide and deliver in, under the laws and regulations, we provide these uh, safe spaces for them to grow and, and deliver accordingly. So uh, to sum up, uh, we do operate in a conservative industry, but we do have obligation to appreciate the needs of the people put people in the center and uh, act accordingly. So as all this good stuff we're listening today with all these technologies will ultimately be able to be placed in good use by, by the people and our seafarers. Thank you, Vasilis. It, it, it's obvious that in, in a time that I pick up my mobile phone and I say, okay, Google, and it starts turning on my lights and everything, the last thing is I got to work. I would prefer to stay home. But on the other hand, obviously, we are actually the regulators, the operators, the managers, the owners, the, uh, any other part of the industry. We are the ones designing this transformation. The last thing you want or we want is to let outsiders to decide how this transformation is done. And a good example would have been a factory in the late, um, I would say, 60s, where the conveyor get in and they have the production line, but it was designed for a completely different purpose. For 10 months, they didn't know what they were doing, and they lost half of their workforce. I'm not going to name the factory, but it was in the United Kingdom. <laughs> for, for, it's a simple question. But if I have no question from the crowd, do I? Uh, yes, Andre, there Thank is you. one question which you can address to the panelists, whichever, whoever you prefer. Are the existing training standards for seafarers adequate for the digital transition? I think we more or less answer it, but if someone wants to add anything, from my experience, and of course I pass it to you, Vasilis, but from my experience, I already said it, 
the framework originates in 1974, I think it is, <coughs> and the revision is 1995 without any change on the basic infrastructure because nobody touched the articles of the convention. So the mentality of the drafters are still that of 1974, which was the year that we drafted the latest SOLAS convention. So in other words, it even precedes what we have lately in safety. So definitely my opinion, and you can quote me in any newspaper, I don't believe it's adequate. But Vasilis, please. Well, uh, as we said before, for us as regulators, the way we personally see our role is to have a legal framework in place that facilitates operations, that is uh, easy to adapt, implement, but also is a framework that invites uh, the industry to work to develop, uh, to become more innovative. When it comes to the convention, I do believe there is a long way to go uh, till we reach uh, this uh, uh, let's say a new training framework or certification framework that uh, is aligned to the needs of the industry. That's why we need uh, to move uh, fast, both, both at, uh, at an EU level, be having the competency, I must say, uh, to submit proposals uh, in the framework of IMO, but also to promote uh, this, uh, the need for modernizing the convention uh, globally and act fastly. You know, I mean, we are concentrating the last couple of years on, on the greening of the sector, on the decarbonization, but we have to understand that uh, safety and training standards of seafarers are a persisting priority and they have to go hand in hand with that. I saw Captain Adami raising his hand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would like to make a distinction here between training and education. Uh, STCW is the most slowest convention moving uh, within the IMO framework. And we cannot wait until STCW will set uh, uh, standards for this. We need to create now, uh, create our digital transformation. And at the same time, we have to deal with uh, the decarbonization. That means we need in the shipping companies, as well as with the manufacturers, we need different mindsets. And these different mindsets can only come from proper education. So what we need in our industry, we need to create new professions. For instance, an environmental engineer mm -hmm. within the, our companies. And uh, for that, we have to start at a much earlier stage than when we talk about vocational and, and, and professional training. So we have to go to, to, to uh, the elementary here and build the stones from there for a new education scheme so that eventually we, we build the creators so that later we have the adapters. And and, and this is where it all goes. I mean, when we look at Eberhard, when he was a captain on the largest uh, oil carriers in Germany, he was driving the vessel, finding a position with a sextant. And it was very normal to us. And we didn't get nervous when we didn't have for three days a position at all. However, in the today's world, when you don't have a position, I mean, you get immediately, you get into the panic mode and we have created systems around us which nobody understands anymore, but they are there. Do we know how a satellite navigator uh, as a device is working? No, we don't know. But we learned how a sextant is working. <laughs> so that means there is a total different mindset and shift of, 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 of education. And we have to start very early. That's my humble opinion. <laughs> Andreas, we it have to change at CCW and we have to start immediately. And I think from Cyprus, we should get full power ahead. Otherwise, other institutions, authorities will come and then we have to fight against it. Let us start immediately. 
Thank you. I mean, I will close because I already got the signal, but I, let me put the concluding remarks. I start from the last point, revised SDW. That should be done, and that should, on the, on the same time, simultaneously, we need also to start training internally our seafarers for two reasons. Until the SDW is changed, there will be seafarers of two standards. They want they just fulfill SDW or any other uh, convention necessary, and the other ones that they are plus plus or digital ready. So we need to have digital ready seafarers rather than just certified seafarers. But in essence, the last thing I want to say as listening to this panel is simple. We are on the train for decarbonization, and half of that train needs to be digital, otherwise we cannot decarbonize because still we don't have the relevant fuels. And therefore, it's an irreversible uh, uh, journey. Those that they are still don't want to embrace fully the digital era, most probably they have to do it, or in my opinion, must do it. But please, please don't forget the seafarer, or don't forget the guys that actually need to run those ships. Minister. No, just a final word from my side uh, in general about the digitalization and what we are trying to do now in, in the shipping deputy ministry. Uh, okay, we are now taking stock and evaluating our internal processes in order to turn it to digital, but at the same time, we will come to you so to know what you are expecting from us. So we'll make sure that digitalization will be a framework that will be facilitating your uh, operations. But a final word is that it's important not, not to turn, I mean, not to come into a situation where technology is available and we are not using it. Yeah. I, I would just want to refer to an example. A year ago, we came up with a platform in the Shipping Deputy Ministry. Is the, is the platform with the name CAM, it's Cyprus Open Maritime yeah. Exchange, to submit ideas, views, uh, proposals, or even uh, exercise criticism to us. Nobody's using that. Everybody still calls, sends emails, whatever. I'm not saying that we want to use, to lose our human touch, but if technology is available, if platforms are available, please use them. Well, That's absolutely Let's correct. hope you will be in charge after March 23. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Thank you very much. Please applaud to my panelists. I see you all at the Right. Thank you to all the speakers and the, and, and the panelists. We've just come to the end of our first uh, session, which was uh, digitalization transformation. You're all invited for coffee, kindly sponsored by GT Maritime. And uh, in order to make up some time, the program was saying 20 minutes, uh, Adonis, I would say we're back by 5 before 12 or 12 o'clock at the latest, so we can get on and make up some time. Thank you very much. <laughs>